So we are going to go through an introduction to the basics of modular arithmetic and talk about what the statement a is congruent to b mod n means. So let's start with some of the basic definitions. We define a to be congruent to b mod n if and only if n divides a minus b. Now, when we talk about the definition of divisibility, if n divides a minus b, that means that a minus b over n has to be a whole number. In other words, we could say that a minus b over n is equal to some integer k. So we know that k is a whole number. From this equation, we can multiply by n on both sides. So we have that a minus b is equal to k times n. And if we add b on both sides of this equation, we get that a is equal to kn plus b. And this is another definition for a congruent to b mod n. We can say that a is equal to kn plus b. So these two statements are equivalent. I want to look at one more definition that will be very useful when we start looking at the properties of congruence mod n. Now we know that a minus b is equal to some multiple of n. What we're going to do now is express a and b in terms of n. And to do that, we're going to use something called the division algorithm. Now, if you haven't heard of the division algorithm, I've left a link in the description so you can check out how that works. The idea is, if we take a and divide it by n, thinking about how we would do, for example, long division in primary school. First, we would have some quotient, some whole number that we get from a over n. We can call that q1. And after that, we would have a remainder, a number that was less than n, so it didn't go into n when we divide. We'll call that r1. That's our remainder. And we know that r1 has to be between 0 and n. We know it's less than n because if it were bigger than n, then we could include it in the original quotient because we could divide by n. So we know that we can express any whole number, such as a, as a quotient times n plus a remainder. This is just talking about ordinary division. We can do the same thing with b. We know that b is equal to some quotient q2 times n plus r2. And of course, r2 is also going to be less than n. Now from here, we can think about what is a minus b in terms of the two expressions that we have here. We know that a minus b is equal to this first expression minus the second expression. So here I've written out the expression for a and then the expression for b. Notice that we have two different parts which are multiplied by n. So we can group those together and we'll have q1 minus q2 times n and then plus r1 minus r2. So we know that this is equal to a minus b. But on the other hand, we know that a minus b must equal a multiple of n. Notice that we have this remainder term over here, r1 minus r2. And we know that r1 and r2 are both greater than or equal to 0 and less than n. So because both of these numbers are between 0 and n, and because we're subtracting them from each other, there's no way that this difference can be a multiple of n, except for in one case, which is if r1 minus r2 is equal to 0. In that case, of course, if we add 0, it won't affect our answer, and then a minus b will be a multiple of n. So if a is congruent to b mod n, we know that a minus b is a multiple of n, and that means r1 minus r2 equals 0. There's another way that we can write that, which is using this notation. This is talking about the remainder of a when we divide by n. So when we do the division a over n, we get a quotient like we saw here, and then we also get a remainder. So this remainder of a when divided by n, that is just r1. And similarly, we can write the remainder of b when divided by n, and that's going to be r2. We know that r1 minus r2 equals 0. And if we add r2 on both sides of this equation, we see that r1 must be equal to r2. 
or in other words, the remainder of A when we divide by N must equal the remainder of B when we divide by N. That way, when we do the difference A minus B, they cancel out and all that we get is a multiple of N, just like we want for a congruence. So now that we have these three equivalent definitions for A congruent to B mod N, we're gonna look at a few important properties of that congruence. And the first of those is that congruence mod n is an equivalence relation. If you haven't heard that phrase before, what it basically means is that this congruence functions the way that we expect it to function when we're talking about two things being equal. Now in order for us to prove that it's an equivalence relation, we need these three properties. So let's go through each one by one. The first property is that A is congruent to A mod N. So any number is congruent to itself, which we would expect if we're talking about things being equal, of course any number is equal to itself. So let's see if we can prove it. If A is congruent to A mod N, we can write it in terms of this remainder notation. So the remainder when A is divided by N is equal to the remainder when A is divided by N. So this equation would need to be true for us to have A congruent to A mod N. But obviously this is true because we have the same thing on either side. And this is just an ordinary equation. We know that these two things are equal. And therefore by definition, we know that A is congruent to itself. We're gonna use the same strategy for these two parts right here. So now let's look at the second statement here. If A is congruent to B mod N, then B is congruent to A mod N. In that case, if A is congruent to B, that by definition means that the remainder when A is divided by N equals the remainder when B is divided by N. So this is the statement we're given. We wanna prove that B is congruent to A. Well, that means that we need these two to be on the other sides of the equation. But of course we know that we can do that when we're looking at two things being equal under an ordinary equality. So if this is true, we can write that the remainder when B is divided by N is equal to the remainder when A is divided by N. And because of this, by definition, B is congruent to A mod N as well. So we've proved the second property. So now we're gonna look at the last property here, which is that if A is congruent to B mod N, and B is congruent to C mod N, then we know A is congruent to C mod N. So here notice that B is sort of the term in the middle between A and C, and we're transitioning from A to C in this congruence. We know by definition that if these two statements are true, then we have the remainder of A is equal to the remainder of B, and the remainder of B is equal to the remainder of C. But because these are ordinary equations, we can use the fact that equality is transitive. So from this, we know that the remainder when A is divided by N is equal to the remainder when C is divided by N. These are all just ordinary numbers and ordinary equations, so we can manipulate them just like we always do. And from this final statement, we know that A is congruent to C mod N, and therefore congruence is an equivalence relation, which means because of these properties, it works the way that we expect equality to work. Now we're gonna prove a few more properties of congruence mod N that have to do with the ways that we can manipulate different expressions when we're doing modular arithmetic. So suppose we have two different congruences here. First, A is congruent to B mod N, and second, C is congruent to D mod N. So we're assuming that these two are true when we talk about our identities. The first thing we want to prove is that we can add the two things on each side of this congruence. In other words, we want to prove that A plus C is congruent to B plus D mod N. In order to do that, we're going to use this second definition of congruence mod N. We know that if A is congruent to B, then A is equal to some multiple of N plus B. So we can write that as a minus B is equal to KN. Now we also know that C is congruent to D, so we can write a similar statement, except instead of A and B, we're looking at C and D. 
So we can write that c minus d is equal to some other multiple of n. So we'll call that multiple j this time, since it's different from k. From here, what we can do is add these two equations. Of course, these are just equations, so we can do ordinary addition. On the left side, we're going to get a plus c, and then minus b minus d. On the right side, we're going to get kn plus jn. Now we can do a little simplification. On the left side, we'll keep a plus c together, we'll group them with parentheses, and then notice minus b minus d. Both of these terms are negative, so we can factor out a minus, and then we'll have b plus d on the inside. Now on the right, both of these have a factor of n, so we can factor that out, and we have k plus j times n. So notice this statement right here. The first expression here, a plus c, minus the second expression, b plus d, has to be a multiple of n. This is the definition of the congruence. a plus c is congruent to b plus d mod n. And therefore we've proved that from these two congruences we can derive this rule for addition. The next identity we're going to prove is that if we have a congruent to b mod n, then we also know x times a is congruent to x times b mod n for some integer x. In other words, we're saying that if we have a congruence, we can multiply by a constant on both sides and it will still be congruent. To prove this, we can again look at our second definition of congruence mod n we're given that a is congruent to b mod n, which means that a minus b must be a multiple of n. Now from here, this is an equation so we can multiply both sides by the constant x. If we do that, we'll get x times a minus x times b equals x times kn. And we can group these terms as xk times n. And what this is showing us is that the difference between xa and xb is a multiple of n. Therefore, we know xa is congruent to xb mod n by definition. And therefore, we're allowed to multiply by constants when we're doing congruence mod n. Now, another important basic identity in modular arithmetic is that if we're given a is congruent to b and c is congruent to d, then we also know a times c is congruent to b times d mod n. So this is saying that we can take the two sides of two different congruences and multiply the left side and multiply the right side, and the result will still be congruent mod n. Now I have another video that goes over a few proofs of this identity, so you can check the link in the description for that. Now because we have these three rules, for the way that modular arithmetic works, a lot of modular arithmetic functions the way that we would expect normal arithmetic to function. We can add numbers on both sides, we can multiply by constants, and we can even multiply different numbers on the left and right side. Now one other thing I'll note is that because of this multiplication rule, because AC is congruent to BD, we also know A to the power of K is congruent to b to the power of k mod n for any positive integer k. And the reason for this is that an integer exponent is the same thing as multiplying a number by itself many times. So if we have a is congruent to b mod n, we also know by the multiplication rule that a times a is congruent to b times b. And from here, we can multiply by a and b on each side again. And we can do that as many times as we want until we get a particular exponent. So those are the fundamentals of talking about congruence mod an integer n. The definition of congruence is that n divides a minus b. And we can also think about that as saying that when we divide a and b by n, we get the same remainder. Using this information, we can show that congruence mod n is an equivalence relation, which means that it behaves the way that we expect equality to behave.
And from there, we can also derive a few rules that allow us to do arithmetic very similar to the way that we do for ordinary equality.